The future of the VFX industry. Can we predict it? Well, let's talk about it. In order to make a plausible prediction, the most important thing you can do is follow patterns. Patterns are a perfect indicator of what's to come as they give you enough feedback to make a plausible prediction. Therefore, we have to ask ourselves, what pattern does the industry follow? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The technology leads and the industry follows. But what does that mean for the future of the industry? Well, in order to answer that question, we'll have to take a closer look at the latest tech. Here, what we have is a 3070, 3080, and a 3090. These are currently the latest NVIDIA GPUs on the market. What I've also got is a 3D scene I built, which will be rendering inside of Redshift. We'll start the scene with the 3070, which was able to render the scene in 8 minutes and 4 seconds. We have the 3080, which was able to complete the render in 6 minutes and 32 seconds. And finally, we have the 3090, which was able to render the scene in 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, another pattern that arises when looking into these things is one that actually all VFX houses, studios, freelancers, and actually anybody within the industry struggle with. And that is time. While a six minute render might not seem like much, there are other factors to consider. The scene that we rendered was in 1080p, and for professional work, you'll typically find yourself rendering in two or 4K, which will drastically increase your render times. And that's for one frame. There are 24 frames in a single second, 30 for television, 48 if you're Peter Jackson. You can see how that will accumulate and your renders could take hours, days, even weeks for a single shot. And while render farms have helped solve this issue, it can be quite expensive and a bit of a headache to deal with. The reason why I actually ran these tests is to show you guys that even with the latest hardware, the standard method of rendering is still extremely time consuming. But luckily, there is a new method of rendering which is beginning to make its mark on the industry. And that method is real-time ray tracing. All right, so I'm here on my computer and I'm running the very popular Unreal Engine. So what I've done is actually brought in the very same scene that we were rendering inside of Redshift. As you can tell, it looks very similar to the renders and I'm sure with a bit more love, I can get it to look exactly the same. But the thing that I want to point out as the main difference between the two is time. With the 3080, I had to wait six minutes for a single frame to render inside of Redshift. But with Unreal Engine, I'm able to move around it in real time at 24 frames per second. That's a huge difference. Now I am utilizing a feature called RTX GI which is currently unreleased and only available for developers. But with Unreal Engine 5 coming just around the corner, we'll get to experience Lumen, which is going to be a very similar feature. While Unreal Engine has the amazing ability to reduce render times, it also has many other benefits. As a 3D artist, you want to enter this state of mind called the flow state, where ideas are flowing and you're trucking along your work. But that can be extremely difficult to achieve if you're constantly waiting to see your changes that you make within your work. With Unreal Engine, you enter that flow state almost immediately, and as a result, you end up turning up better work. So we are at the end of the video, and I promised I would answer the question. The future of the VFX industry is going to follow the latest technology, and the latest technology is currently being optimized for real-time ray tracing. So we can safely assume real-time ray tracing is going to be a big part of the VFX industry. Now, does that mean the standard method of rendering is going to become obsolete? Personally, I don't think so. I think both methods will be utilized for specific purposes, but one thing is for certain. 
real-time ray tracing has hit the ground running and it is not stopping anytime soon. I actually want to take this moment while we're on the topic of the new line of GPUs and get my friend on here because he actually ran some tests of his own with the 3000 series and his findings were very interesting and I think a lot of you guys will find them very helpful. All right, guys, so I have my buddy John Awada here. He is with uh, Maverick Digital and Origami Dollar. And uh, he's actually uh, worked closely with us uh, to do some GPU tests. And I think his results were extremely interesting. So, yeah, why don't you take it away? Hey, Victor, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, the, the benchmark testing was really a result of not being able to see. You know, you see all these benchmark tests happen online, and it's like, it doesn't really tell you very much. Um, we don't, you know, from a legacy rendering perspective, I don't care about frame rates. Um, all I care about is how fast can I get these frames out. And uh, so what we ended up testing was we ended up testing the same cards over uh, different other variables, such as, you know, in this case was done testing different CPUs. Uh, what we're able to figure out is that, you know, I guess the, the moral is, Throwing a lot of money at your hardware isn't necessarily the way to get the fastest renders. Um, in fact, it's quite the opposite. You really have to cater your hardware to get the maximum performance. So you know, if you have a bunch of really fast frames, having the top-of-the-line graphics cards or the top-of-the-line CPUs, that's actually what we found is the worst combination to have. You want to have the CPUs that have the highest clock speed and you don't need a lot of cores. And so there's a lot of variables there in which which we tested um, and you know we're hoping to test some more things in the future where we test other variables which um, again people are not testing when comparing GPUs and how they render legacy scenes such as different speed of RAM, uh, different motherboards, that's a that's a big one right because there's so much variation in the motherboard like how, how does the CPU communicate with the GPU like what what are the lanes that it has to do that so you know these are all things that we plan on testing in the future actual real world tests that I can relate to uh, as someone who's seeing frames come off a farm. So uh, that that's where you know, that's where this benchmark testing really came from, and uh, you know I think I'm really excited about the results and to share them with people as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean th that's something uh, people would definitely want to consider when you know purchasing these 3000 series GPUs, uh, especially yeah. when you're you were talking about stacking GPUs. I think you found some interesting things on, on that as well. That was the most interesting thing. I mean, I, you know, I, as I'm sure many other people, as well as a lot of the rental machines, you know, the motherboards come in certain sizes. And when you, I thought that by stacking two 3080s, we're going to get mind bending performance out of, um, out of these cards and just render times that were just through the roof. And, and I just was not getting that. Um, and after testing a bunch of different variables, drivers, software, making sure that my render was actually picking up both GPUs, um, I actually found that the limiting factor was heat. It was a thermal throttling yeah. issue. Um, you know, these, these new 3080s, they're, they're quite thick and you can stack them one on top of the other, but then what ends up happening is one card ends up basically getting, you know, no airflow into it. Um, and I think, what what I found, in fact, was by I got much much better performance by putting a, a smaller card, such as a 2080 Ti, on top, closer to the CPU, and then the 3080 at the bottom, um, where now both cards could could breathe. And uh, uh, that 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 thermal throttling is a is a very real thing. It's something I think a lot of people maybe forget to consider when they just try cramming a bunch of cards into these motherboards. Um, of course, all this yeah. stuff can be can be overcome with, you know, PCI risers and all kinds of custom setups, which is, you know, things that we're working on as well, which is really exciting. So, yeah. Uh-huh. That's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about getting two 3080s and just selling my 1080 Ti's, but maybe just getting one and, and, and matching it with a 1080 Ti yeah, or something. Unless you have a solution for making sure that they both get adequate airflow, which, you know, five millimeters or you know even a centimeter that's not adequate enough when you know these cards need that airflow to get to those fans yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah cool awesome man well thanks uh thanks for coming on here we'll definitely uh love to get you get you back on here with with some more interesting yeah. stuff yeah looking forward to next yeah, round testing yeah. thanks for having me yes sir all right all right man thanks that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to visit our website at vfxtechnologies.com. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. 
and I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.